Hello friends, welcome to our channel Phoenix Media. Today we will be taking you through Will Smith's American biographical film, Pursuit of Happiness. Released in 2006. Let's begin. Chris Gardner, a San Francisco salesman, invests his whole life savings in portable bone density scanners in 1981, which he shows to doctors and promotes as a useful enhancement over ordinary x-rays. The scanners are quite important in Chris's life. While he is able to sell the majority of them, the time difference between sales and his increasing cash demands irritates his hotel-made wife, Linda. Despite caring for Christopher Jr., their soon-to-be five-year-old son, economic insecurity is dissolving their marriage. Chris encounters Jay Twistle, a lead manager and partner for Dean Witter Reynolds, while trying to sell one of the scanners, and captivates him by solving a Rubik's Cube during a cab journey. After Jay departs, Chris has no funds to pay the fare and opts to flee, prompting the driver to angrily pursue him into a BART station. Chris boards a train, but one of his scanners is lost in the process. His new bond with Jay lands him a job as an intern stockbroker. Chris reluctantly agrees to paint his apartment the day before the interview in order to avoid getting evicted owing to his inability to pay the rent. While painting, Chris is approached by two police officers who take him to the station and demand that he pays for the multiple parking tickets he had obtained. As part of the punishment, Chris is ordered to spend the night in jail instead, which complicates his plans for the interview the next day. Chris arrives on time for Dean Witter's office, despite his crappy attire. In spite of his outward look, he impresses the interviewers and is offered a six-month unpaid internship. He'd be one of 20 interns lining up for a paid employment as a stockbroker. Chris's unpaid internship irritates Linda, who ends up leaving for New York in the hopes of landing a position at her sister's boyfriend's new restaurant. Chris informs her simply that she is unable of being a single parent, and she agrees that Christopher will stay with Chris. Chris's issue is worsened when the IRS dissolves his bank account for unpaid income taxes, later he and Christopher are evicted. Chris ends up with less money in his pocket, leaving him and his son homeless, and they are forced to spend the night in a BART station washroom at one point. On other days, he and Christopher spend the night at a homeless shelter. Chris later finds the bone scanner he lost in the BART station and sells it to a physician after repairing it, wrapping up all sales of his scanners. Chris uses many methods to make phone sales calls more quickly and effectively, including reaching out to potential high-value customers and breaking convention, despite his limited work hours and knowing that broadening his client contacts and revenues is the only way to obtain the broker job. Walter Ribbon, a top-tier pension fund manager, even brings Chris, Christopher, and his son to a football game, where he meets some of Walter's colleagues who are also potential clients. Regardless of his difficulties, he never discloses his hardships to his co-workers, even going so far as to lend one of his superiors, Mr. Frohm, $5 for cab fare, a figure he cannot afford. Chris also studies and passes the stockbroker exam. Chris is called up to a meeting with the partners as his last day of internship comes to an end. Mr. Frohm remarks on his new shirt, to which Chris responds that he believed it was fitting to dress for the occasion on his last day. Mr. Frome smiles and tells him he should wear it again tomorrow, informing him that he has won the highly desired full-time employment and compensating him for the prior cab fare. Chris shakes hands with the partners while fighting back tears. There, that moment was the happiest moment of his life, which also brings tears in us. He then goes to his son's daycare to embrace Christopher. They jokingly go down the street and are passed by a man in a business suit who is none other than actual Chris Gardner himself. And that's how the movie comes to an end. Please subscribe for more movie recaps and thanks for watching.